Hey, what's good, Miami Beach? I'm Jerry Libin, President and CEO of the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. And you know, there's so much news that's brought to us on a daily basis. Sadly, most of it is about unfortunate circumstances. This show, brought to you by Robin Jacobs and our board of directors at the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce, What's Good Miami Beach is devoted to bringing to you, our viewers, our tourists, our residents, information about really good things happening in our community. Today, I'm proud to be joined by Adrian Molina from Warrior Flow. You're really gonna enjoy meeting Adrian. He's been teaching yoga since 2004 with an extensive worldwide following through his platform, School of Yoga, Warrior Flow. We're gonna learn about that. He's also a writer, meditation teacher, sound therapist, end of life doula, mental health first aid facilitator, and an ambassador for accessible yoga and yoga for all. Adrian, welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Jerry. So nice to be here with you. Can you, uh, let's start by just talking a little about yourself personally. Uh, have you grown up here in Miami? T tell us about yourself, your, your, your family life, what brought you here? I am born and raised in Argentina and I came to Miami early 2001. And since then I fall in love with Miami. I've been here since then. I spent a few years in New York, but Miami's home. And so even when I travel, I always come back to Miami. I live here and it's a relationship that it will never change. Just my heart is here. Isn't it a fantastic, I mean, I know I moved here in 1982 and I still to this day, when I drive across the causeways and I see those cruise ships, not so many these days, but soon to be, yes. you know, I'm like, wow, I get paid to live here. Yes. <laughs> Is there yes. nothing better than that's, that? It's funny that you mentioned that because that's my favorite point. And since when I move to these days, when I'm through the causeway, entering the MacArthur uh, Causeway, that's my favorite view of the, of, of the city. Yes. So tell us about Warrior Flow. What exactly is it? Where did the name come from? How did you get involved with it? It's an interesting question. So when the, the, few, the, the years that I live in New York, I started to teach yoga. So Warrior Flow first, it was the first yoga classes community. And then over the years and expanded to community activism, connecting to causes that were important to the, uh, to the community at large. When I moved back to Miami, Warrior Flow became a foundation. And now currently we offer our classes, yoga, stress reduction to shelters, hospice, Miami Beach Police Department, and different organizations that need the yoga for stress reduction. We work with Mount Sinai Hospital, Jackson Hospital, uh, and many different organizations. So we went from uh, an event uh, company offering classes for the community, for the locals, and extending to community at large to underserved populations. It's incredible. Um, and talk a little bit about your funding. So you, at first it was an event, right? Yes. An event is a one time mm -hmm. uh, you raise the money, you do it, you yes. charge whatever way. But, but as a foundation, as an yes. organization, you have to have ongoing support. Yes. So do you charge fees? Are there grants? Uh, talk a little bit about the foundation and, and, and how the, you That's the, 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 the most difficult question to answer. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you're actually asking that because that's being our, our main point. How can we launch more programs? So we are at a stage as a new foundation that we are getting support mainly from our participants to our events and private private uh, donors. So we'll, gradually we're getting into grant applications and most of the programs that I'm doing, I'm doing them myself with a small group of facilitators and we're growing and we're learning step by step how to get into the greater Miami area to find funding and support. There's so much need in, in the community, this on the underserved, underprivileged communities. But um, yeah, funding is one of the, the points where we spend most of our time. So Adrian, you know, just, let's just spend a minute on that. Maybe we can shed a few ideas because uh, as a 501c3, a nonprofit, you're required, of course, to have a board of directors. Yes. Um, and one way that you could consider uh, potentially, you know, growing your your support is is to grow the size of your board. I don't. What? What? How many board members do you currently have? Uh, probably we have about seven board of directors. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that most of our board of directors, is, uh, some of them are Miami based. We also have a medical advisory board and they're Miami based. So because we're a new organization, everything is kind of coming into place. But yes, I haven't thought about that. So it's a very good idea. Yeah, I think, you know, we, you know, we've considered the board members, you know, not only uh, people that can give you input, 
but they also have a responsibility yes. to help make sure that the organization is funded properly. Yes. So whether it's their own resources or yes. the particular people that they know and organizations they know. So that's just a thought that perhaps broadening yes. the, the base of support through growing your Yes. The board, yes, uh, and and the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce, you know, might be a, a fertile place for you to be looking for people. You know, we have a health and wellness council. We'd love to see you, you know, actively yes. involved with us. Maybe sharing your ideas with us, and you know, and just a general outreach and asking people if they would like to get involved, and and perhaps that that could help you out. There. I appreciate that a lot. It's actually it's been on my mind because for the most part I do things by myself. That's how I started, and then I'm at a point where like I need to exp if I want to continue to offer these programs they're so valuable for the community i have to reach out and learn how to reach out so i appreciate that input so when you currently offer a program let's say to a school or, yes. or a hospital uh, does the facility the school or hospital pay a fee or does each participant pay a fee or both so both so it depends on the organization so there's the reality that when we offered our programs ideally we get uh, compensated we sign a contract but there are organizations or places that we work with that might not have the funds. Can't do it. And in many instances, I, as a, 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 a myself as the president of the foundation, I decide, you know what, it's worth of our time to find the funds to support this community, and we do those. So we have both, mm -hmm. and so we try to to. Like many nonprofits, it's a constant struggle. Thank you. With the bottom line. You're <laughs> yes. no different than probably 99% yes. yes. of all nonprofits. Yes. Uh, we all face those kinds of challenges, yeah. but uh, but you're doing good work. And obviously, you know, uh, when did you start the foundation? Right before COVID. Okay, so 2020, 2019, yeah. Yeah. which made it even, you know, yes. exacerbated the, yes. the degree of difficulty. <laughs> to be honest exponential. with you. I woke up one day and I've been entertaining the idea for many years. And I woke up one day and I said to myself, today is the day I need consult to consolidate the work that I am doing along with my uh, friends and other co-workers. We need to consolidate this so we can present it to the city, we can present it to Miami and be serious about the work that we're doing. And it's been great. It's been great. So I know you, you also have a online platform, a TV platform. Can you talk about that, yeah. how that evolves? How do, how do people That's, access it? How do they see it? That is very interesting because as soon as COVID um, came into the scene, sure. We couldn't teach classes. By necessity, you had to go online. Yes, we have to go online. But I didn't want to go online in the same way that everyone was going online. I didn't want to be just me teaching classes. I've been doing this for 20 years. So I reached out to friends from around the world who also were in lockdown. And I said, can we do something together? Can we bring people together? And so we joined forces. And that was the beginning uh, of what we call Warrior Flow TV. And that is an online platform for pre-recorded classes, but they're not only yoga, <clears throat> excuse me, meditation, uh, fitness classes from teachers from all around the world. And so for those who might not be a local base in Miami, they can tune in for a very affordable monthly membership and access unlimited content. Yeah. So you do a lot of different things. I noticed, you know, from the bio you gave me, some of them I'm, I'm not really aware of. And I, I thought maybe you could expound a yeah. little bit on the end of life program that you yeah. have. And how does that fit in? What does that program consist of? So end of life basically is for someone who has a prognosis from a doctor that has a certain amount of time until the transition. So it's called sometimes end of life practitioners or end of life doula. So when, when a baby is born, you have a doula. And then when someone is transitioned to the next chapter of their life, when they're uh, appro approaching the process of dying, so there's someone who are next to them providing comfort. So you usually have nurses. Mm -hmm. They do more of the physical and taking care of the patient, that there's no pain. But then you have someone like an end-of-life practitioner like me or many other end-of-life practitioners who are there to help the, the client or the person to make sense of the transition and also to alleviate the, the strain that this process brings to the caregivers, to the family. So for example, if the family has been on a week next to this person and they need a break mm -hmm. to go take a shower, to go get groceries, then I am there. And depending on the patient and whatever stage they are, they might be very talkative and they, you know, when they approach that process, they might be interested in kind of reflecting, looking back, mm -hmm. and you might help them to make, uh, to reach out to someone they might have felt that they haven't reached out in a while, to make amends sometimes, 
or to more reflect. More of a spiritual connection. More of a spiritual connection. It's not hands-on, it's not physical, it's not medical. Yeah, I'd never heard of that. Of course, I heard of end of life and, you know, we, yeah. we, we have you know, organizations that deal with that, but I had not heard of, you know, this kind of almost like a, like a, a religious experience. Yeah. How, how do you market that? How do people find out about that? It's actually not something that I market. I mean, it's interesting. It's not a topic that people, they're all only like to talk. Yeah. But for example, yesterday I was at the uh, Seasons Hospice uh, in the Miami Jewish uh, um, hospital. hospital. And so we were doing rounds of visits and just talking and just saying, hello, how are you? We're here just to check on you and have a conversation and you learn about the history. And so it's basically for hospice, but also for a particular a client. So if a family needs that kind of uh, service, you could market it. But we're simply offering through the foundation through three or four hospices that we have in the Miami, Miami Beach area. Yes. And it's a very powerful work. Mm, yeah, I'm sure. It's a very powerful work. And, and again, through your board and their contacts, that's not the kind of service I imagine it's easy to bring up when you're talking to someone who, who's about to die about you know paying for this kind of a service. Yes. But it, it's probably something that you could get funded yes. because of the sensitive nature of it and how important it is. Uh, you probably could find organizations or grants that, that would pay for those services. Yes. Uh, so that could yeah, be interesting. We're, we're working on that. It's, a, it's an interesting field. It's a growing field, and it's a much-needed one. Mm -hmm. Another question that came to mind, uh, my, my wife is very much into mindfulness. And I wonder if you could explain to people the difference between meditation and mindfulness, because mm -hmm. I think they get confused. Fair I'm enough. not clear. <laughs> yeah. So in my mind, the way that I always try to... Uh, um, to explain it is, or to feel it actually on my body and in my mind, meditation is approaching a technique, uh, many times being seated, sometimes we practice meditation on a chair, on the floor, it's kind of connecting to a technique. Mindfulness for me is a state of being. Like this conversation right now, I'm very mindful, I'm aware, I'm conscious of you are right here in front of me, the way that I'm talking. In the moment. In the moment. Right in the moment. So mindfulness is something that it goes with me all the time. It's a state of being. And meditation many times is just a, a discipline, a technique for that has many, many uh, benefits. And of course, meditation and mindfulness, they intertwine, they connect many times. But mindfulness is just a state of uh, awareness, of being. That's, That's the, I mean, I don't know if that uh, answers yeah, the question. Yeah, no, I think, it's, I think it is. Uh, I will say that the practice of meditation facilitates many times to be more mindful of our daily life, our words, our actions, our interactions, how we present ourselves. And many times just to create that state of mindfulness, we need to have a meditation practice. Hey Adrian, how does someone get in touch with you or Warrior Flow if they wanted to find out more or to sign up for a program? So our website is warriorflow.com for all the events that we do uh, on the beach. And we have the Warrior Flow Foundation has their own website, warriorflowfoundation.org. We are always in social media, Warrior Flow on Facebook, Warrior Flow Official on Instagram. And yeah, we're always there. Adrian, it's a pleasure. Congratulations and uh, keep up the great work. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at some of maybe our health and wellness. You could do a presentation that would that would really thank be you, Jerry. It's awesome. a pleasure to be here. Thank you so thank much. You.